Besten. Wir haben euch lieb. Liebe Mama, du bist die beste Mama der Welt. Ich liebe dich. Oh. Hola, Mama. Well, happy Sunday, everybody, online again. And we want to wish all the mums out there absolutely happy Mother's Day. Yes. And all to the fathers as well. We always want to honour the fathers as well at this time. So, uh, yeah, happy, happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. <laughs> happy Father's Day. <laughs> and happy Fathers and Mother's Day. You know, we do, we're taking today as an opportunity to honour fathers as well. And, you know, we're very excited that you've been able to join us today. And we honour you, mums and dads. You are amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully many of you would have got a card in the post from us just saying you are amazing because you are. Yes. So anyway, I hope you get a lot of love this today. And for everyone that is listening and joining the service today, don't forget to call your mom and call your dad. You don't really need a reason. Just make it up and just do it. It'll going to be a great blessing to your family. I'm sure it will be. But, you know, today we've got a lot planned for you. We've got the word that's been brought by the one and only Shashila. Uh, not Shashila, what's That's her name? That's my mother's name. So Sheila was Your my mother's, mother's name, Sheila. but we mean Sheila. Spanish we mean Sheila, Sheila. <laughs> Spanish. And she's been actually instructed to speak it in Spanish because oh, I just la, la. know that it's going to go to a whole other level in Spanish. So anyway, too. it's going to be a great message today, but really trust that you've had a great week. Um, obviously, we've been praying, believing God for breakthroughs. That's never, ever going to stop on our part for you. Yes. And so today, enjoy the worship. You know, even though we're continuing online, I spoke to the leaders just a couple of weeks ago, and I asked this question, and I want to present it again to all of us in this season we're currently in. Can Jesus, can God build His church with a building or without a building? And obviously all the leaders said, of yes. course God can build His church. With or without? Well, right now we're a church, Hillsong Berlin, without a building but we're spread out all across Berlin and we've got people joining us from different parts around the country and from many parts around the world. And God is still building His church. He is. And I want to encourage Absolutely. everyone who's joining us today just to keep stirring your faith, yeah. keep believing, stay connected. Let's stay united in this season. Let's believe that this summer is going to be amazing. It really can be Absolutely. because I believe we can make a decision, you know, and believe God that He's going to use you to reach out to someone in this season, to bring someone closer to faith, Amen. to bring someone closer to something that's on their life when it comes to God-given purpose. I believe God can use all of us in a very profound, unique way over this summer. So keep praying. Yep. Let's keep believing yeah, for this venue always. to open up. We've got some things that we're working on and we will let you know as soon as we can. But in the meantime, let's stay in faith. Let's stay full of faith. And let's keep believing God that He's going to use every day as we honor Him, as we worship Him to really keep moving forward. So lean into the worship today. The songs are uplifting. They're beautiful. Our team have worked so hard behind the scenes to really help us stay worshiping, stay connected to Jesus. Amen. So come on, let's turn up the volume and let's go for it.
without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle
Well, it's always fantastic to be able to sing and worship and praise God together. And, you know, that's one thing I really want to encourage everyone, Joyce, that we just keep praising God. You know, there's a Bible verse, and we've talked about it many times before, but it says this, it says that God inhabits the praises of His people. You know, I really believe that you want to change the atmosphere in your home. You want to change the atmosphere of your life. You want to actually start to see what God sees and bring in all that God's got for you and me, one of the things that really helps us is praise, yeah. praising God, you I know, and it. I just pray that we don't just do this on Sundays. The goal is that you get to watch it over and over. I got a message this week from someone that they said, they watch the message again. Yeah. And uh, I think it was you speaking actually, and they watched it over and over and it just encouraged awesome. them. And you know, faith can grow, faith does grow. But if we want to carry this season together, if we really want to believe God for breakthroughs and supernatural doors to open up, we've got to turn up the praise. Yeah, and I thank God right. for the team that are full of faith. They yeah. work so hard behind the scenes and they're worshipers. They love to worship Jesus. You can see that Bob's on the keyboard. And I love Jules last week playing the keys and singing to Jesus. But you know, this is important that we carry this season together yeah. by praising God, praying, staying connected, and really understanding that our faith can and will mature in this season. Absolutely. And so I really encourage everyone to keep praising God in Jesus' name, amen. So right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was just going to say, Mark, that because it works. Absolutely it works. actually works, you know, and don't doubt it. Just, just lean into it and be part of what is a solution and what is going to be productive in your life, which is praise and worship. Yeah, and I think one of the big challenges, being honest with yourself, sometimes the hardest thing is to get started yeah. because you don't feel like it. Yeah. But that's where I think maturity kicks in. And it's all about realizing, you know what, don't let feelings rob you of all that God's got for you. Yeah. So come on, let's continue to praise God together. And we've got a whole lot of things to praise God for. Awesome. And we've got lots of things to praise. Praise, uh, to pray about as yeah. well. So yeah. which one do you want to go first? Should we do it? Let's bring the praise report, All we? the, Well, listen, last week we saw three people make a decision for Jesus. That's awesome. And that is fantastic. absolutely fantastic. And I heard some actually great reports about in kids' church and the families that some of the young kids have been making decisions for Jesus That's also. Fantastic. So praise okay. God for I that. Love it. And, uh, and congratulations to Laura and Jasper on the arrival of their beautiful new number two, baby number two. Baby uh, boy. I think he's called Finn. Finn, I love What an that awesome name. name. Fantastic. So congratulations, Jasper and Laura, and uh, brilliant news. And uh, people are thanking God for the translation team. I don't know if you realize this, but we get to translate today's service, all of the services that we do online, into multiple languages. Yeah. And so Incredible. well done and a big shout out to all the translation team. We love you. We couldn't do this without you. You're amazing. So you know who you are. So yeah. give yourself a little clap. Come on. And uh, lots of great things happening. People have been, health is restored. A family said the whole family's been vaccinated. Reconciliation with a friend. Um, a dream interview job situation went great. So that's awesome. And uh, someone as well got a key to spot from August. So that's good news as well. So again, new apartments, new opportunities open up for people. People are so thankful and so grateful for what God is doing in their lives. So that's amazing. Yeah, so what it. are we going to pray about? Well, we've got definitely things to pray about, that's for sure. And one of the things I just want to quickly highlight before I start to pray is that, you know, it's Mother's Day today and yes. we're honoring the fathers. And we do understand that this cannot, that sometimes we understand that sometimes this is actually a painful day day for people. Now, it depends on people's upbringing, yeah. circumstances or loss. You know, there's so many reasons that can make this day actually a little bit painful, a little bit uncomfortable. But I just want to encourage every single one of us that Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says that God has a plan for you yeah. and it's full of hope. He wants to give you hope and a future. And so really want to, whatever your starting point has been, today is a day where it can be a new beginning. So let's believe God for that for people who are may be struggling with today. And the rest of us who have got good memories and strong memories, let's continue to thank God for His goodness and faithfulness. Yeah, hey? you know what though, Joyce, I love that. We're talking about honour. And today we are honouring the mums and dads because they are precious. Yes. And that's one thing I learned in the house of God many years ago when I started coming to church about this culture of honour, about honouring God, honouring each other, honouring yourself, you know. And it might sound like a strange word today, but God is big on honour. And so we do want to learn how to cultivate an honouring spirit in yes. our lives 
And I pray today that for wherever your position is, whatever your background is, like Joe said, most people come sometimes from very difficult situations, family lives. But whatever the story of your life is, it's unfinished. Yes. God's still working. Come on, man. And He can bring restoration. He can rebuild marriages and homes and families. And I know when you let God in and you let Him be who He's meant to be in our lives, Lord and Savior, He literally can show us better days. So I'm believing, Joyce and I, we're believing that you're gonna see better days when it comes to your families, Absolutely. when it comes to your mums and dads, when it comes to your relationships in life in general. And you know, actually, before we get praying, I wanna let everyone know, this next few weeks, three weeks, we're gonna be doing a series on enlarged learning called Healthy You. And we're gonna be looking at relationships. We're gonna be talking about parenting with grace. How do you parent your children with the grace of God? And all of these type of things. So listen out for that. It starts this Tuesday. It's gonna be three weeks of investment, input into all beautiful things relating wisdom of God when it comes to relationships. How to do relationships better. How to learn from the mistakes of the past. How to not repeat the mistakes of the past. We're gonna be talking about singleness. There's too many people single and they don't wanna be. We're gonna be talking about wisdom, godly wisdom in dating. There's not enough dating. So obviously I've and highlighted- sometimes not enough wisdom. And truth is <laughs> not enough wisdom across we all of it. We can have it all though. We so can. the beautiful thing is it's an investment into you. It's an investment into us. And I really hope that many of you can join us online Tuesday nights for the next three weeks, investment into all things called relationships. A healthy you will make a massive difference wherever you go. Yeah, and I really believe so you're going to enjoy it. So yeah, yeah looking, looking forward, forward to, that. to that. Come on, looking let's forward. pray. Shall we pray, my dears? Shall we pray? So we're praying today. You know, we've got quite a few people who are pregnant in the life of our church and we are praying for healthy pregnancies yes. for all of them. Yes. Many things here for healing from somebody who's suffering, a teenager who's suffering with anorexia, cancer, COVID, other ailments, but also people wanting wisdom, wisdom in the workplace as well. And you will have relationships in the workplace also. So being part Sometimes of- Sometimes they're the toughest relationships. Yeah, true, true. So, you know, we're gonna pray for wisdom, but also join us as we do healthy homes and healthy families and yes. healthy relationships. You know, apartment moves, immigration process to go smoothly, a safe travels, a vaccine rollout. But then also, as we always do, we remember that we're part of a bigger picture, yeah, aren't absolutely. we? We're here in Berlin, but we're part of a big world and there's trauma going on in India with the crisis there, but also Mexico with the collapse of the bridge and the loss of lives. So many different things, including the explosion in Kent in London with the loss of lives. So let's be praying. Come on, let's pray together with faith. Amen. So Heavenly Father, yes, we Lord. thank you that we can literally bring every single request to you and make it known to you. Father, we thank you that you are good, yeah. that you are faithful and that you hear us. So yes, right Lord. now we pray for every yes. Single need. Yes, we we ask that supernaturally yes, you will come and intervene, yes, Lord God, Lord. that you will make a way where there seems to be no way, and that, Heavenly Father, we will truly see yes. your kingdom yes, come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' wonderful, powerful name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Joyce. And thank you for everyone for letting us be a part of this moment when it comes to prayer. And I really, for many of you, you would know that we are not going to shy away from praying about anything and Absolutely. any situation that falls. But one thing I love about this, Joyce, mm. is that as a church, you know, we've got to remind ourselves that it's about being focused on Jesus. Yes. It's so easy to be focused on the problems of the world. Yeah. And when we're surrounded by so much need and so much pain so and, and suffering and trauma, it can be overwhelming. And so just really from yeah. me to Joyce, really to everyone in our church, just to understand building a church is not about bringing the problems into the church. It's not ignoring the problems, no. by the way, in the world. No. It's also, it's about honoring the name of Jesus. It's about lifting up the beautiful name of Jesus. Yeah helps all of us on, to Mark. see so things clearer, yeah. to see things better. And I want to just want to say this because I know what it's like to just be aware of all the challenges and praying about the problems. No, we don't pray about the problems or praying, you know, problem focused. We're praying in faith about what God can do, what God Solutions. does in and through us. God is a God of solutions. He's a God of restoration and miracles. And I really want to take this moment to remind you that we're not about bringing problems into the church, but at the same time, the church shouldn't be insular or ignorant of the challenges of the world. No, no, God builds a church so His people can connect with Him and bring a spirit of faith from heaven yeah, into absolutely. earth. And I believe that's exactly why God needs us to be here. So we Salt can believe for breakthroughs. We can take on these Come situations, on. whatever it is, jobs, employment, health concerns, 
big challenges, small everyday challenges, whatever it is, building a church is the best thing we can do for Berlin. Yeah. It's the best thing we can do for our world, our broken, crazy yeah. world. So I really hope today that you've learned something or just had a perspective that can help you. Don't be so focused on all the problems, but don't ignore them neither. Bring God's wisdom into everyday life and you watch how God begins to use us all in a profound way. So let's keep Amen. praying. Let's stand together in this season and let's believe for the supernatural in Jesus' name. Awesome. Amen. Well, that. we're going to take a moment actually for our giving. And I actually love this part of the I service. Know. And uh, do you want to do it or shall I do you it? You go for it. All right, well, there you go. Actually, I was prepared for it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to read that. today about excelling in the ministry of giving. You know, you can excel in lots of things. Um, what do you excel in? Dance moves. No, 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 no. You do. You actually have excelled lately. In this season, I would say that you have excelled in dance moves in the kitchen. There's no doubt. <laughs> All right, well, all of us can excel at something. And uh, I'm going to read to you from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 7. It's a really well-known verse, but this is what it says. Since you excel in so many ways in your faith, your gifted speakers, your knowledge, your enthusiasm, and your love from us, is it say love from us or love for us? I want you to excel also in this gracious ministry of giving. Well, what I love about this verse here, it's obviously a letter from Paul it's talking to the Corinthian church. And what he says here, he says, you excel in faith. I believe there's so many who are joining us today. And yeah, that's true for you. You're excelling in faith. For maybe some of us, we need to really lift our faith game and really believe God that we're called to live a life of faith, not a life of doubts and yeah. misery. But he says, you excel in speaking. You're going to hear one of the great speakers in a moment, Sheila. She's gifted at speaking the word of the Lord and blessing and being a strength. Not just gifted in Spanish, she's gifted in speaking wisdom when it comes to God's word. But also he says, Paul says to the Corinthian church, he says, you're excelling in knowledge, in enthusiasm and in love. And this is what he says. He says, I want you to continue to excel in the ministry of giving. Well, that's my encouragement to all of us today. Yeah, you know, if we can excel in so many things in life, wouldn't it be great to excel also in the ministry of giving? So I really want to encourage you with the word today. And Hillsong Berlin, let's continue to excel in good things, yes. in great things, yes. in noble things, yes. in helping others, in lifting people, in getting involved in the craziness of our world. But let's excel in the ministry of giving. Why? Because it's in giving that we can see things change in our own lives. When you let go, it's amazing how you begin to see God work in your life. And you know, it's amazing how grace and giving always go together, mm. but law and withholding always seem to hang out together. Mm. So let's not live a life of law and rules and regulations that restrict us. There's no doubt that our world is framed by laws. Our world is governed civilly through rules and regulations, but God's not a God of the law. He's the God of grace. He shows grace to us through the person of Jesus. And I believe our giving can be in a great, great reflection of a gracious heart, a forgiven heart, an accepted heart. And I believe all of us have been accepted, loved and forgiven by Jesus through what He did on the cross. So why don't we live from that revelation? And I really want to encourage all of us at Hillsong Berlin to excel in the ministry of giving. Honour God with the tithes, which is returning, and then begin to be generous with the blessing, with the increase. It's amazing how that can begin to build your life, build your future, and it can also build our church and build the future that our church has got when it comes to moving forward. So be blessed today in your giving. Use the details online. The best way to do it, obviously, is through the giving app. But use the facilities. And thank you for being generous today. Amen. Giving online is quick, easy and secure. Here's how. You can go to hillsongberlin.de slash giving or download the giving app on your phone. Enter the amount you would like to give and your phone number or email address. If it's your first time, you will receive a verification code. Type it in and you're good to go. To set up a recurring giving, click the box here. And of course, you can also give via PayPal and EC card simply by following the instructions on the website. Thank you for your generosity. 
So are you ready for the word? Because our beautiful Sheila, our Spanish Sheila is going to bring it to us. And you know what? She shared a little bit with us at staff yeah, recently and it was so powerful, Brilliant. which is why we asked her to bring it today, a message on a can-do spirit. And you know, this message that Sheila's speaking with us and sharing with us today is actually framed who we are as a church. Absolutely. And so I know it's going to be a real blessing and great strength for all of us as we move forward. So be encouraged today. Hi, church. So good to be with you today and honoring a moms and dads and excited to share from God's Word today. I want to talk about a can-do spirit. This is something that has been in me popping out in my mind lately. And in fact, actually at the beginning of the year, Lee Burns talked about a Caleb-type church. This is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. I love this story so much that if this one would have been a boy, it would have been a Caleb. Somewhere in the name would have been a Caleb. But I heard this first, for the first time, this candle spirit in church maybe four years ago. Mark shared about this message and resonated so much with me, especially because we've been working with the next generation, with youth and young adults, with kids. And it was all about them inheriting the promised land because they had a different spirit. So let me read it to you. You find it in Numbers 1325, and basically is the Israelites have gone as to spy the promised land, and after 40 days, they're coming back with the report. Bear with me, we're gonna do it in the Spanish, Sheila's version, okay? Verse 26 says, they came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh, in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land beautiful, amazing watermelons and tomatoes. Imagine how amazing would have been that. They gave to Moses this account. We went into the land into which you sent us and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is the fruit. But the people who live there are powerful and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there, apparently giants. The Amalekitas lived in Kreuzberg, and the Hittites and Jesuvitas and Amoritas lived in the hill country of Prince Laverg, and the Canaanitas lived near Grunewald and along the Spree. Then Caleb said to the people before Moses, we should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. I love this part. He basically told them to shut up. He didn't listen to the negativity, to the passivity, to the fear. He told them, we can do it. And verse 31 says, But the men who had gone up with him said, We can attack those people. They're stronger than we are. And they spread this bad report among the Israelites about the land they had explored. They said, The land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw were of great size. They saw the Nephilim, the, the descendants of Anak. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes and we looked the same to them. A little bit dramatic, don't you think? I mean, these guys must have been like Spaniards. It's just a small tendency to exaggerate here. We'd rather just stay in the wilderness. It's very comfy here. Or even better, why don't you send us back to Egypt as slaves? <laughs> but you see, the negativity didn't, or that bad report didn't stop Joshua and Caleb from believing what God said. As we continue reading at the end of the story, this is what God says in Numbers 14, 24. But my servant Caleb, because he had a different spirit and has followed me fully, or in another version, wholeheartedly, I will bring into the land into which he went, and his descendants shall possess it. So powerful. And here's the point. It's all about the next generation. The decisions that we're making today will affect the children and our children and their children. And that's what we're fighting for. This is why we love so much our moms and dads. We have, you, you have such an amazing, incredible role. But also for all of you singleites, you can start now, today, investing into the next generation. Over the last few weeks and months, we have received so much wisdom from our pastors, our leaders, and our team to where we, we are going as a church. And my was, one thing from last Sunday, from Joyce's message, was a shift from being full of fear into being full of faith. 
or from Mark, he talked a few weeks ago about what's God's plan. Or from Pastor Brian, get up and get going. It's building time. We've been talking about this whole, whole Holy Spirit action. And do you, do you see the common thread everywhere? I love it. It's action, action, action. <laughs> you know, my favorite movies are, guess what? Action and adventure. I love when there's something to win, something to conquer, something to discover. I mean, honestly, growing up, I always wanted to be like Indiana Jones. I had so much imagination, like nothing is impossible. I would always climb up the highest tree. I would play in the woods like Mowgli. I used to get all my cousins involved like musketeers and all my adventures. And we sometimes got in trouble. One time, well, I'm gonna tell you a little story here. We're playing outside in my, in my garden, in my, in my patio with my cousins and <laughs> something terrible happened. Um, my cousin threw my little toy outside the, the patio, down two floors down. And I was like, okay, we, we have to go into a rescue mi mission. This is not happening. We're not losing that little, I think it was a unicorn. So I told everyone to bring enough rope, you know, skipping rope, like what you used to jump. And we were going to climb down. Anyways, it was a bad idea because I only had two meters of rope and it was maybe four to six meters down. Um, <laughs> but I still got myself tied up. I put it around my, my wrist and I hung myself outside the wall. I was ready to descend into this mission. And then my sister, <laughs> my sister probably sh she, she saved me. She went into the kitchen where my tears and tears were and she screamed, she last jumped down the patio. Drama. My mom couldn't move from the chair, so my tear ran out and grabbed me with a single hand and pulled me back in. <laughs> uh, after that day, obviously, my parents pulled up a fence, so that would never happen again. See what I'm saying? Like, you guys, parents are amazing. Movies are great and entertainment and fun and building our imagination. But when it comes to God's Word, we're building a faith. So obviously, when I started reading the Bible, I was like so drawn into these stories of all about faith in action. I always thought, oh, Paul is like the Indiana Jones of the Bible. And then we saw David fighting a giant. Obviously, I was, uh, I was learning all of this while I was in kids' church, serving kids' church, the best place to learn about the Bible and, and God's story. Or Joseph, how he went from the challenges from being a slave to be the second in charge of the land. Or Daniel in the lion's pit. It's a faith story. So coming back to Joshua and Caleb, what was different about them? What kind of church do we want to be? Are we a can-do church against all the odds and circumstances, with venue, with no venue, with good weather or with terrible weather, with restrictions or no restrictions, with holidays or no holidays? What giants are we afraid of? What is the consequence of actually doing otherwise? What did the other Israelites miss out on? What will we miss out on if we are not ready to take ground? We are believing to go to Prague and Warsaw, but can you believe that we can do it? What kind of spirit do we want to have? You know, what was different about Caleb and Joshua is that they spoke a different language. They spoke faith. And in 2 Timothy 1, 7, says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We can do it. So obviously, what all of these stories had in common is that there was a challenge, there was a giant to conquer, there was something to overcome. None of the challenges were easy. Some of them faced real life in their situations and what they had in front of them, there was always bigger than them. But the spirit of faith was even bigger. So we know that what is in front of us as a church is not gonna be easy. We are gonna have to rebuild. We are gonna have to pick up the same spirit from Joshua and Caleb from the Old Testament, knowing that he is on our side. In Philippians 4 says, I know how to live with almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living with in every situation, whether it's with full stomach or with an empty stomach, with plenty or with little. For I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
Who loves this Bible verse? It's awesome. It's such a great, you, it's just a great way to start the day. Just put it in front of you, in the mirror, wherever you are, and start the day saying that to yourself. See how it changes everything. We should not be moved by what we see in the natural, but by the Spirit. So I would like to finish here with a few points from what we have learned from Joshua and Caleb. You know, we have the, all these amazing seven cards in our resources for you to be a blessing. We'd love you to be part of that and use that and take that so you can keep learning and growing. And so I just wanted to add a little bit to it. <laughs> so here are seven things about people with a can-do spirit. Okay, let's go. Number one, are you ready? Having a different spirit, it's a decision. It requires action. Everything about a kendo spirit is about action, and it starts with a decision. It starts today, and it's a decision of taking action. All this indecisiveness, take, waiting on, on things, watching another motivational clip, all of that doesn't require any action. To live with a kendo spirit starts with a decision to take action today. Not mañana, not after siesta, today. <laughs> In the story we read before, we can see clearly the ones that with a different spirit wanted to take action straight away. You and me, we can be like in that story, taking action today and hold on to God's promises. Amen. Okay, number two, they spoke a language of faith. Nothing is impossible for God. The Bible says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And in that story, the people that brought a bad report, they basically, they were talking from a position of not with God, but without God. They were seeing things from their own strength and what they spoke became the reality. They never went into the promised land. The Word of God is the only thing that can build faith into our lives. The stories that can inspire you, but faith come from His Word. So you can find it in the Bible and start speaking it over your life. Amen. Okay, number three, see what God sees. They don't focus on the challenge, but in God's promises. I loved how Mark said over the other day and at the leaders night, you don't need faith to be on hold. You know, on hold, like in pause. The same happens here. You don't need any faith to see what you can already see to see the challenge or to see the difficulties. You don't need any faith for that. But all changes when you see it from God's perspective. You can focus on His promises, not on the challenges. That is obviously a human thing to see the circumstances, circumstances around us and that's why we need to refocus on Him every day. This is the difference maker. You'll see how thankfulness arises and you can change how you see things. That's actually what Andres and me, we've been doing personally. We go out for walks and when we start to get, you know, like uh, overwhelmed or we see thing, getting things cloudy or foggy, that we can't see well what's ahead or what's, what's happening, we just start thanking God and that, thanking Him for what He has already done in our lives, thanking Him for our families, thanking Him for our friends, for our pastors, for our church, for the city that we live in. And that really helps us to start seeing everything from God's perspective, not just being worried to what, with what we can see. Number four, are you ready? They are willing to take risks. Can do people are willing to take risks. They speak up, not conform with the norm. I love how Joshua and Caleb silenced everyone, not just settled and accepted, oh, everyone's saying a different thing. They stood up for what they knew that God was able to do. And I think this is the key for a kendo spirit, not accepting what everyone says, but bringing faith into the situation and taking a risk because it's worth it. They knew what was on the other side and the fruit of that mindset shift it was from fear to faith. They got to the promised land. And number five, a kendo spirit, it's an attitude. Wholehearted means 100% in. This is the key question. Are you in wholeheartedly? Not just partially or a little bit or 50%, but 100% in. And that's the attitude that Joshua and Caleb had. They were 100% in. That's the attitude that makes a can-do person stand out. All of this maybe, I'll see what it works for me. I'll tell you tomorrow. These are everyday words and this is part of our culture. 
But a can-do attitude says, hey, yes, I'm 100% in, and I'll figure out the details later, how to make it work. You know, when you get married, it's 100% in. When having a baby, I guess it's gonna have a bit to be 100% in. I don't know all the details, but I'm sure it's gonna be 100% in. <laughs> Good, okay, number six, we're almost there. No, they were not scared of the challenges. A can-do person is not scared of the challenges. They knew that they were not going on their own strength. So how do you see the challenge? As a problem to face or as an opportunity to overcome? I love the message from Mark a couple of weeks ago where it says, God puts you in Christ. Despite the challenges to come, your starting point is always as an overcomer in Christ. That is our advantage. You know, in Formula One, the guy that is at the front it has an advantage. That's how we start the race. We have a green light to go for it. Okay, and number seven, here we go. This is the last point. Write it down. They created opportunity for others. The next generation will be inspired and benefit because of your decisions today. If you keep reading the story of Joshua and Caleb, there can the spirit open the door for the next generation to go into the promised land. They inspired the young generation to believe that with God, we can have a different spirit. You know, for Anders and me, we, we came to Berlin 10 years ago and we had to take action. We had to face challenges and I'm sure we're gonna continue to face many challenges, but it's all about learning and growing. And the one passion that stands out that we, is that we could create an opportunity for others to see the next generation getting stronger, young people believing that their lives are full of purpose and that there's nothing to fear and they can make decisions out of vision and not out of destruction, a godly vision. This last year, we have experienced challenges as a church like never before. Not having a venue to gather, finding different ways, always having to figure out like how can we do it, like having this candle spread as a church. And also recently, we have heard from Mike and Joyce, they've been preparing us for what is ahead of us. So church, how do you want to face this challenge? Because the challenge is coming, whether we like it or not. But as a church, do we want to have, is this the spirit that we want to have? This is who we are called to be for Berlin and beyond. So can we make a decision today to pick up that spirit from Joshua and Caleb, a can-do spirit with no apologies. And whatever happens, whatever comes, it will be to the glory of God. In Jesus' name. to share one more thing and this is the most important church this is the moment that we believe together pray together for friends and a family if you're listening right now and you are excited in your heart to see what is this whole different spirit thing about and you don't know where to start it's actually really easy really simple you can start today with a simple prayer 
Making a decision to put Jesus at the center of your life is a defining moment. I made that decision 10 years ago and I never looked back. One of the things that happens when you pray that prayer is that your spirit is made alive to God. Jesus overcame everything that you and me we cannot, are not able to. Maybe you already made that decision to follow Jesus a time ago, but now you realize that was only religion and there's not a real relationship. Why don't you also join us in this prayer? So wherever you are, whatever you find yourself, I would love to guide you. Dear Jesus, thank you for accepting me and loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross and thank you that you rose again to give me eternal life. Today, I have decided to follow you, Jesus, and accept you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for forgiving me for all my sins, past, present, and future. From now on, I declare, I am loved by God, I am forgiven, and I am a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So good. Awesome, congratulations. If this is you praying this prayer for the best, first time, it's the best decision. So why don't you let us know, take action, write it in the chat, write it in the link in the description below, and we would love to get to know you and help you in this exciting journey of faith. Well, how good was that, yeah, eh? fantastic. I told you it'd be good. I tell you, and it just goes to a whole nother level when the Spanish turns up. So well done, Sheila, for bringing the word today. I really hope for so many of you being encouraged with that today. And don't forget to get the notes, sign up for that. Every week we put the notes, the teaching, the Bible verses with some great questions to reflect on and yeah. to share with your friends. Yeah, it's very good. You know, let's keep growing it. in the word and not just hearing it and then forgetting it, really apply it to your life. And so we made that facility available for you. So if you need to know more about that, DM us or ask on the chat or just go on the website and we'll help you with that. So yeah, yeah great. And this week, relationships, um, healthy you yeah. and helping people, parenting, um, singleness, dating, all of these things, but so much wisdom. And But God has got wisdom for each and every one of us to move forward. And by the way, if any of you have been with us for a few years and you feel like, well, I've heard that, I've done that, listen, it's always good to refresh. Yes, it's always absolutely. good to remind yourself because there's things that we forget and yeah. things that we can actually... And I believe God always prepares fresh things for us in the season we're facing right now. And also sometimes God speaks into the moment right now for what's coming up ahead. So let's really lean in together, carry this and Discovery is gonna be on this week as well, helping people come closer to Jesus, understand who he is and why he has done what he's done for all of us. So let's keep moving forward. And before we go, I got one more thing because it's Mum's Day, Father's Day, I got something for you. So here we go. Here we go. <laughs> beautiful flowers, handpicked by myself for my very, very beautiful wife, who is an amazing mum. So, so expectation for everyone is that's exactly flowers, chocolates, you name it, gifts galore. Happy Thank, Mother's are they Day, for me, darling. Happy Mother's Thank Day. Thank you. Happy, Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Are they beautiful? Thank you. You're welcome. Mm. Love you all. Thank God for being here today and thank God for you. And let's keep moving forward. So have the re a really good rest of the day and fantastic week. See you in the week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Just rhythm